Um, at Chini, we are we, we're very proud of the fact that our shoes are 100% made within our factory in Desborough. It's something that uh, has happened over the years. Obviously, the, the materials come, are imported from Italy and Germany, France, but we cut and we close. That means we stitch the uppers together. This lasted in our factory and with you know 100%, and that's something that uh, I think goes for our credibility. Okay, well, within the Chini range of shoes, there are many uh, lasts different toe shapes as you can see from shoes on the table here. Our shoes are made in full sizes and half sizes and a variety of width fittings, F being a medium fitting and G being a slightly wider fitting. And uh, it's an absolute myriad of fittings and each shoe has its own manner of fitting. You might think, you know, that's a little more shaped in the toe, so it's a little bit more restricting. Or you, you want a classic 125 last, which is much fuller in the toe. And it's got a nice arch support here. It's a five eyelet tie. It's everything that you would want from a good supporting shoe. If you happen to have a slightly high arch, then you, you, you may well want to go for out the Derby range, which opens at the throat here, which gives you a much easier access into the shoe. The Country Collection carries the, the day-night rubber sole, which people are now just starting to appreciate um, the qualities of rubber, where it's very nice to have a leather sole, but the, the day-night it won't slip, you don't get the wet penetration or the cold up from the sole, and of course it's, it's much longer lasting. And the, the really serious shoe, of course, is the, the cleated sole, if you really want the business end of a walking shoe. It doesn't appeal to everybody, but it, it does a job, it's much heavier sole, heavier welt, storm welt, and is a very good solid shoe. The, these three shoes um, form part of our 125 range, which is a very classic Chini last. It's got a nice classic toe shape, it's, it's deep through the instep, it's an easy fitting shoe, and it is available with the Derby Lace or the, the classic Oxford or an addition to the range is that the chucker boot with the three eyelet tie. They all carry the, the, the leather sole with a full leather heel and the quarter rubber and then in F and G fittings. You will find that the, our G fittings are slightly more generous than other manufacturers, but we find that uh, more of a bonus than a hindrance. When you try the, the chucker boot on, sometimes you find it a little restricting through the lace, but once having got your foot down inside the shoe, then it is equally as comfortable as the classic shoes. This particular style is from our Imperial range. It's in the very finest lightweight calf, five eyelet tie, slightly finer sole, just a little closer edge, a little more detail, and it's well, we, in channel, where the, we raise a, a lip of leather around the outer edge of the sole, we stitch into the channel and then we stick it back down again. And it also has this rather distinctive waist, this, this London waist, where if you'd had a, a pair of shoes made bespoke in the St James area of London, that's how you would expect it to look. And they're, they're very special shoes. And perhaps you'd just like to try one on, just to see how it goes. Okay. It's always better to use a shoehorn when trying on shoes because it saves pushing the back down and your foot will slip in much easier. When trying new shoes on, one would expect to have a little gap in the V here for lacing. So when the shoe does stretch, it, you, you've got a little adjustment. The most important fitting of a shoe is actually from the heel to the joint because your joint is the widest part of the foot and it should fit in the widest part of the shoe, which is right on the apex there. Not so much to worry about from, from the joint to the toe because that will look after itself. And if you, if you get the heel to the joint correct, that means the arch of your foot is sitting in the correct area of the shoe. So perhaps you'd just like to stand on that and we'll have a look and see how it fits. I think that uh, is quite comfortable. How does it feel to you? Excellent. Does it? Very nice. Okay, well you might like to try something with a slightly different lace. That is what we call the Oxford lace. 
You can see from the style of shoe we're showing you here, it is what we call the Derby lace, which is very much more open at the throat. And is, if you happen to have a high instep, then it, your foot will just slip into it. So let's just, and just stop, in we go. And it was very much easier for, for your foot to go in. Again, the same fitting uh, formula applies that the heel to the joint is important. And again, we can lace it up and we've still got this nice little area here for adjustment when the shoe settles down. So just stand up on that and we'll have a look. See the heel clip is very good. You will notice that a lot of our lasts what we call combination last, so it's wider in the forepart and it's more tailored to the heel. That's why you get this very nice heel clip that sits in very close. And that again, I think would be a very comfortable fitting for you. Mostly it's just a matter of personal taste, whether you prefer the Oxford lace or, or, or the Derby. But you know, some people have a, have a, a high instep, so they're obviously pushed in that direction. Another style of boot which you would like to consider, maybe Jackie, which is the classic chucker boot. Again, it's, it's Goodyear welted construction, which, which you may or may not know, which means that the sole is actually stitched through to the upper. And this carries a Daynight rubber sole, which is non-slip and has lots of properties. You don't get any wet penetration up through the sole, it's non-slip, and it is particularly hard wearing. So if you'd just like to prop your foot in there, Again, use of a shoehorn, it saves forcing the back of the boot down. Also again, we've still got the adjustment for when the boot settles down a little bit and you need the laces a little bit closer. Nice heel fitting. Joint here, widest part of the shoe, it's fine. No creasing under the arch. Stand up on it. You know, again, a very smart boot, but with the, the high performance um, sole, it'll give you a lot of good wear. The secret of rubber soles is to keep the heels nicely repaired. If you wear down the heel, then you tend to walk on the outside of the shoe and that will accelerate the wear in the sole. So just keep an eye on the heels, keep them nicely repaired, which obviously leads me on to another topic, doesn't it? We at Cheney repair shoes, and we're delighted for people to send their shoes back to the factory for what we would call reconditioning. They're totally stripped down, and they go back on their original lasts. It takes about three weeks to do, and you will be totally amazed at the transformation. For a third of the price of a replacement pair of shoes, you have a new pair. I'm always extremely proud when I bring out a pair of repairs because the, the customer will say, oh, are they my shoes? And you can say, yes, they are. It's, it's a wonderful feeling, wonderful feeling. I think you have a pair of shoes that will give you great pleasure to wear. My predecessor, Norman Copperweight, had a little expression. He used to say, when you've got over the cost of anything that you purchase, the joy of using it goes on. And I think he was quite right to say that. That's true. That's true. Great. Thank you very much, Martin. This is Tweed. The tweed this is the Tweed boot which forms part of our country collection. It carries a, a traditional welted sole with a storm welt and the heavy cleated sole. So this, this is Deal, complemented by the full brogue Hythe and the half brogue Tentadent all carry the Rambler rubber sole. This is the, the 125 collection and it is mainly sourced by the Five Eyelet Derby accompanied with the leather sole, the Full Brogue, Five Eyelet, Oxford lace, very comfortable, easy to wear, again with the leather sole, excellent business shoe. We have a Jackie boot, which is the, the classic uh, chucker boot, again on the leather sole. These are available in two fittings, F and G. So that's moving on to the slightly more contemporary last. 
It's just a little bit more square on the toe. A lot of people think, oh, I don't want pointed toes because they're going to crease the, my, my feet and they're going to be hard to wear. As we said earlier, the important fitting is heel to ball. And if you get this right, your toes will look after themselves. We well, have that in the Oxford and the two eyelet tie plain lace up. Classic business styles, full brogue, a, a classic cap and the Chelsea boot, all on leather soles. The very pinnacle of our range is our imperial shoe. Now these are very fine, lightweight leathers on fine leather soles and this is stitched in channel and by that we mean when we make it we lift a lip of leather around the sole edge we stitch into the sole and then we we glue the the lip of leather back so you don't see any of the, the stitching which you would see in a conventional construction okay also we have this rather unique waist which we call a london waist which if you'd had a pair of shoes bespoke, handmade in the St. James area of London, that's how you would expect to look. If you feel that you have any more questions to ask us, whether it is on fitting or even on the technical side of shoemaking, um, feel free to uh, go to our website at www.genie.co.uk. <laughs>almost perfect feet. So we'll just make sure that the shoe fits. It's not too deep here or too short in the toe. At that point, you can make an adjustment. At the point you go to bulk and you've got lots of shoes, it's too late. You could just have to take the pain and keep going. So there are various adjustments and it goes back to the last maker. You might put a little more depth on here or make it a little shallower. And that's how it evolves, really. We have a school within the factory and we like to um, bring people in while they're still at school to come in and have a look at the factory and they just see what goes on and they probably talk to people like me um, who I have to say the shoe trade has been very kind to me. You know I started we had a retail group of shops called Jones at that time and we still have if you go around the high streets you'll still see Jones and I started off there just selling shoes and just gone through all the different sort of positions. And I came up here to work for church in 1973, uh, running their shopping shops. And then I, I was offered a directorship for wholesale. So, so they come and talk to people like me and say, look, this is what I've managed to achieve. And if I can do it, anybody can do it. And I think it just encourages people to come into the factory and yeah, I, I could do that. We have a tradition where parents, mothers and fathers work in this factory. Uh, their offspring come to work and within the family they have a tradition of shoemaking. And I think they're very proud to be associated with a family business. And everybody in this factory likes to do his best. Whatever part of the production he does, he will do of his best. And we like to make people multitask so they can move around their room and operate different machines. And of course, the more skills they have, I think, the better the remuneration. But I think that uh, 
we have to sell our factory or our production to the children and say this is what it does, this is what you can do because maybe there's perhaps not the charisma in working in a shoe factory that there is in a warehouse where they've got everything we haven't got. They've got light, they've got heat, they've probably got showers, and they whiz around in a forklift truck. We have none of this, you know, but we have a beautiful environment and we have a craft which will go on and on forever, hopefully. It's all made here. Every piece of that is made here and we can hold our head up high. Yeah, honestly made in Desborough. All of it, 100%.